Hello everybody and welcome to the MCC pre-show. I am your host Lucario Knight and today we will be taking you through everything you need to know going into MCC Pride. Today joining me at the desk we have Saber. Let's do this. Locky. Howdy. And Stein. I just woke up. Why am I here? So let's jump right into this starting with the team introductions. On the Red Rabbits, Lizzie and Joel are finally back from their break, joining up with returning players Kara and Vicstar. We are fine. We are certainly glad to see these people back in MCC Pride. Up next, we have the Orange Ocelots with returning players in the Littlewood, Pearlescent Moon, Tapple, and the newcomer Squishy. All right. Up next, we have the Yellow Yaks with Ellen, Mike, Jane, and Andy, and they are from the group outside Xbox. I sure hope they are. Next up, we have the Lime Llamas, consisting of Wisp, Tubbo, Joey Graceffa, and famous vlogger Tom Simons. This team radiates chaotic energy. Up next, we have the Green Guardians, containing It's Funny, Rainbows, Golden Glare, and Draconite Dragon. We're certainly glad to have this team of Roblox and Minecraft players in MCC. Up next, we have the Cyan Creepers, the only team to have all four participants streaming, of Liza Beam, Moose Elk, CPK, and Spifey. And then we have the Aqua Oxalotls, consisting of Illumina, Gizzy Gazza, Creekcraft, and Raigai Rocky. What a groovy looking team. We also have the Blue Bats, consisting of A. Christine, Shovel, Neachu, and Smajor. This is sure to be a wholesome and chill team if you're not particularly one for super loud personalities and a lot of screaming. Up next, we have the Purple Pandas, made up of the Bi King Arid, joined by the streamers Jerome, Mefs, and Burren. And lastly, there are the Pink Parrots of Green, Solidarity Gaming, Technoblade, and Wilbur Soot. This team is sure to be a fan favorite and has high chances in this competition. That's all for the teams, and now we are going to take it over to take a look at the LGBT creators who are participating. This MCC is celebrating Pride Month as the Knox Crew and Scott have teamed up with YouTube Gaming to create an MCC charity event, raising money for the Trevor Project. The Trevor Project serves LGBTQ youth through providing crisis intervention and suicide prevention services. We here at MCC The Show also wanted to highlight all of the LGBTQ creators who have come out about their sexuality in the special MCC and introduce them to viewers who might not have been familiar with them. Shovel is an asexual content creator known for her Among Us and Minecraft content, as well as being an OG in the MCC community, competing since the very first one. We are getting ready for arrival. We've got our whole team, the girls, the gays, and Jack Middle. Aired is a bi content creator that has 1.1 million followers on Twitch and 356,000 subscribers on YouTube. Aired is known for his deep voice and chill vibes. He's won Dodgebolt in MCC 5 and 13 and first played in MCC small 1. channel called Daily Dose of Internet. Some of you may have heard of them. They're fairly small. Got a casual 10 million subscribers. Dang, that's a long name, Smajor, and MCC organizer all in one. Scott is a gay content creator with over a million subscribers on YouTube and over 400,000 followers on Twitch. He works tirelessly to put on every MCC for us, including this one. Hi, break hotel. Fellas don't treat you very well. Mewtwo, also known as Nikki, has 2 million followers on Twitch and 1.08 million subscribers on YouTube. Her first event was MCC 10, and she won survival games in MCC 14. Gizzy is a gay content creator who has been in the Minecraft scene for over 9 years, with 2 million subscribers on YouTube. He currently creates animations, as well as Minecraft content on his second channel. Hey, how's the movie coming along? I think it's actually good, pretty swell. Yeah, it's looking great. I'm so pumped at the- It's actually supposed to come out next week. <gasps> Scandal! Illumina is a bi content creator with 561,000 subscribers on YouTube and 294,000 followers on Twitch. He is a legendary speedrunner and the only player to hold records in the main three categories. His first MCC was with MCC 12 and he won MCC 13. Oh, hey. What's going on, eh? Hey, does that A to the everything? We're playing video games, eh? What you talking about, eh? Alright, let's see if I can do this. Squishy is a gender fluid and bisexual Minecraft YouTuber known for the channel with over 1 million subscribers, as well as frequent collaboration with their spouse, Stampy. And welcome to another live stream. Troy Gusef is a gay actor and creator. He has 2.77 million subscribers on his gaming channel and 9.38 million subscribers on his main channel. His first event was MCC1. He's starting to warm up to me, which is very nice. Oh, oh, 
who's this pretty girl? Oh. Captain Puffy is a bisexual Twitch streamer with over a million followers, known for her participation in the Dream SMP and Vault Hunters, as well as participating in MCC since the very first competition. So tomorrow, Chonky streams. Tapple's a bi content creator with 3.3 million subscribers on YouTube and 760,000 followers on Twitch. He's known to play UHC, Skywars, and Bedwars. His first event was MCC 8, and he won MCC 12. Um, what is that thing? Wait, what does that say right there? Activate me? All right, so we're going to be doing a new segment called This or That. We're going to be shown five different questions, and we're going to choose one of the two available answers. Oh, okay. Ooh, right. Interesting. Is, are, is, Tom, is Tommy or Tubbo going to place higher? Well, I'm, I'm going to personally say, although I think Tubbo is the more consistent player, uh, I have a strong feeling that Tommy's going to uh, have a good pop-up performance in this MCC. What about you, Locky? i got to agree. Tommy's too strong. I feel like he, he's proven himself enough that he's, he's a very clear top 10 player. I mean, Tubbo just made it into the top 10 the last event. I definitely would go Tommy as well with you on that one. So I guess I'm going to have to say this. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Ooh, build mart. Is it going to be played first or last? I think, I'm going to be honest, I think it might be first. Personally, I'm going to go with this again. Due to the fact that uh, we have a lot of new competitors playing. A lot of them might be relatively new to competitive Minecraft, as they call it. And they're going to be excited to jump into build mart because it, it's been upgraded. It seems a lot more fun than the, uh, the old build mart, as we'll say. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. I think since Build Mart was played uh, first this last time, there were so many PvP games in the last event. I think the the more teamwork-oriented teams are going to want some revenge. They're, they're going to want to play Build Mart a little bit late. Uh, and I think, s especially since we have a lot of new players, and since a lot of them aren't as competitive and, you know, PvP-oriented, I think there's a strong potential for them to be willing to vote for a game like Build Mart later. Oh, interesting. All right, I guess we're agreeing to disagree. Wilbur Bridge. Okay. Is, is... Uh, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Oh, I have to think about this one. Do you, Wilbur do you have... Soot. He he's never been quite quite the best bridger. I'm gonna be honest. He does have a habit of falling into the void. And I'm honestly, I'm gonna say it right now. I'm willing to put my house on the line. I will bet my house that he will indeed fall into the void at any point in this event, whether it's sky battle or if it's to get to the other side. He will be building a bridge. And it will not end well for him. I'm putting everything on the line for this. I'm definitely going to go with that. You know what? You know, I think I, I think I'm not only going to agree with you. I'm going to take it a step further. I think he's not only going to fall off the edge uh, during a game like Sky Battle, but I think he's going to anti-clutch. All right. And, and if you don't know what that is, clutch. if you don't know what that is, that, that means you you place a block intending to block clutch, but you accidentally place a block that that blocks your fall and causes you to fall into the void. I see your anti-clutch, and I raise you one. Uh, he's going to fall into the void five times during the event. Five times. Count him. All right? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, that's an interesting one. All right. Technoblade in survival games. Is he going to die, or is he going to win the game? Well, I mean, what's more likely? Is Technoblade being killed because he's the biggest target in the game, or him winning? Yeah, that's an interesting one. And 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 despite Techno being as good as he is, I, I'm going to have to go with that on this one. I'm, I'm going to have to say that Techno is going to die at some point, although it will be relatively late in the game. Uh, because I generally think that Techno is of the mentality of trying to get as many kills as possible rather than actually going for the win. That's the strategy that he sticks to in games like Sky Battle. And I think it's going to apply a lot uh, in survival games here. I think if we're, we're taking it statistically, too, I mean, he has a much greater chance of dying due to the fact that there is up to four winners and a lot of dead bodies. But uh, I definitely, I agree. I think Technoblade will probably die in this. I can't see him winning the whole thing. He could come second. That's probably pretty likely. He might make it near the end, but I don't see him taking it all the way home for his team in this event. Okay, we got a dodgeball Ooh. question. Um, I love me some dodgeball. Dodgeball is one of the most interesting parts of the whole tournament. Um, Agreed. All right, let's see. Is it going to be a three-game sweep? There must be a dominant team for that to happen. Or are we going to get the maximum five games, so it's going to come down to the wire? I guess this is going to depend on which teams are in dodgeball. Who did you predict is going to be in dodgeball again? 
Uh, I predicted pink and lime. Ooh, I was going to say pink and lime, but I think I ended up going with lime and orange. And I think because of the, the, the talent, if you will, on both teams, I think it, it's most likely going to come down to, to five games as opposed to just a single sweep. How about you? Yeah, I also think since there's no one team that's, you know, that particularly excels at dodgeball, like obviously Techno's a god, but uh, there, there isn't a team that's full of complete dodgeball gods like, you know, Fusha Frankenstein's level of, of dodgeball skill. Um, and so I, I think also because of that, um, we're going to get a five-round dodgebolt series as opposed to a sweep. All right. Well, that concludes this segment of This or That. Let's take it back over to the studio. Now let's take a look at our individual predictions for this MCC. Personally, I think that Technoblade is going to get first place because, come on, guys. I mean, he's the blood god. Uh, he's obviously going to get first place. This man's insane. In second place, I see Illumina, mainly due to just the sh sheer amount of practice he's put in. And in third place, I see Tapple because I have faith that we have not seen full potential of this man. For my wild card, I think it'll be Raigai Rocky because I think we haven't seen the full potential from him, especially since of how well he did in MCC2 when there were less experienced players. Saber, what do you think? In first, I think it's going to be Illumina. He's quite the skilled player, and he's also played quite recently, as opposed to certain other players. I think that he can do quite well in any game, with any game selection. Second, I think it'll be Techno. He's absurdly good at the game, as we've seen with the second overall average. But I don't think he's going to be... I think he's too rusty to get first overall. And third, I think it's going to be Tommy. We've seen incredibly good performance before from him, and I think that'll be enough to get him third. Lucky, what are your thoughts? Oh, well, why well, don't I tell you? Because I love you both, but I have to admit, you're both dead wrong, all right? Technoblade, not a top three player. Never was, all right? What you need to realize is that we have three beautiful mates who are going to smash it out of the park in MCC Pride 2021. That is Laser Beam, that is Muse Elk, and that is Pearlescent Moon. These three are unstoppable. They're on another level. They're beyond S tier. They're in Algebra tier. It is so unbelievable that they're going to break records, all three of them, and that's for no bias reason at all. And while I must admit that for my wildcard prediction, I went with Jerome ASF. This man has over 500 episodes of Minecraft Hunger Games under his belt. And all I'm saying is, if that is one of the last played games, he's gonna break every record under the sun and come first overall. What's, what's Frankenstein think over here? Well, I think I'm gonna go with a slightly different route of having all Aussies in the top three spots. Um, I'm going to have my first place as Techno, no surprise there. My second place will be Illumina, no surprise there. And my third place will be Tommy, because uh, Tommy, you know, popped off in MCC 14. He, you know, he's, he's gotten a good chance to adjust to the changes in MCC Season 2, and he can really use that knowledge and skill that he's developed in here. Um, my wildcard player is going to be in the Littlewood, or Martin. Uh, he has he did really well in MCC 14 and in Jingle Jam, which was a similarly uh, casual event like this one. And he could really be the difference between Orange making it to Dodgebolt or not. So I'm excited to see what comes of that. So that summarizes our top three predictions. Um, Lockie, I did notice something. You did not. You were the only person to not have Technoblade in your top three. Do you think his lack of Minecraft content will make him a bit too rusty to perform as well as he does normally? Oh, no, not at all. He is a very good player. He is so skilled that he could literally win Minecraft Championship with no hands and whilst blindfolded. However, he is good, but he's only good enough for fourth place. None of you guys have really acknowledged that how good the three I mentioned are. They're going to come through and stomp everyone. Laser Beam and Muse Elk on their first Minecraft tournament ever. All right? And for my wild card, I picked Jerome. See, we've all picked different wild cards. But if Survival Games is played towards the end, there's no stopping him. All right? What do you think, Stein? I, I mean, I, I don't see how Fortnite's skill is going to transfer to Minecraft at all. Like, yeah, they both have Battle Royale elements. But apart from that, there's really no similarities between the two games. I can tell you're just putting Aussies in the top positions for reasons I, I i'm i think we're just gonna have to agree to disagree um i'm i'm interested in why saber put Ill illumina over technoblade i'm surprised about that he's rusty don't you know he hasn't played in quite a while but ha has rust ever affected technoblade uh no exactly so i mean i i don't really see your point there i you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to prove to me. 
So you think Illumina is just going to outskill Technoblade? He's simply better. He's the best of them all. Other than Laser Beam, of course. Of course, of course. Yeah. No, honestly, I'm starting to admit that Laser Beam might end up getting uh, getting first individual. He's going to get that victory royale, as we're going to say from now on. Yeah, victory royale and dodge bolt. Um, Locky, another thing. I hear you talking about survival games a lot. Does it not scare you that Tommy and Tubbo, who won survival games in the last MCC, are teamed again? Uh, no, that doesn't scare me because uh, they're not going to be as intimidating. Uh, when the Red Rabbits played in Minecraft Championship 14, they won the survival games because all three of them were carried by Niachu, and she's on Scott's team, so that's the team I'm going to be worried for. So that'll wrap up our individual predictions. Let's now take it over to how we think each team will do this MCC. Starting with my team predictions, in first place I have the Pink Parrots. This team looks way too strong to be fit in a four fun event, and I absolutely think they would be fit, they will be in the first place position this MCC. In second place against them in Dodgeball, I have the Purple Pandas. Again, it looks like a very strong team for a four fun MCC. It would fit right in into a normal MCC. And in the Dodgeball, I would see Pink winning over Purple just because it, they have Technoblade, who is one of the best Dodgeball players of all time. And for my wildcard team, I have the Lime Llamas because Tommy and Tubbo are what I call volatile care, volatile players where they can do very well if they actually try hard. Add that to Wisp, who did very well in MCC 14 and Joey Crisefa, they could definitely put in a strong performance. Stein, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think Lime has uh, strong chances of making it to dodgeball. In fact, I have Lime in my top two teams. Uh, I think they're going to make it to dodgeball a lot easier than you seem to be thinking. Uh, the, the, you know, they, uh, like you said, they had strong pop-off potential. But I, I have a lot less faith in purple than you do. I agree with you, though, that pink is going to be the number one team. My wild card team is orange, just as my wild card player was one of their members. It seems like all four players on orange have strong potential to improve greatly from their previous performances. And in the end, I could see them doing really bad or really good. We'll just have to see during the event. In terms of the winner of Dodgeball, I also think Pink is going to win because Techno is a god and Wilbur and Green are not half bad either. Uh, Lockie, I heard your very interesting picks on the individual board. Uh, what about your team predictions? Well, might I say that I have some more controversy to stir up with my team predictions. You said Pink, you said Pink, and I say Pink is the stink because they will not be making Dodgeball today. My dodgeball will be the first place Lime Llamas and the second place Orange Ocelots, with Orange prevailing in dodgeball because Tapple is a beast and very underappreciated. Whilst my wild card team is going to be purple because I love Jerome and the other three members on the team who I definitely remember the names of. All right, let's go. What do you think, Saber? I think you're wrong. I know it'll be pink. They will be the ones to reach first. And I know after that, it'll be Lime. After that, I think it'll be Aqua. There have been another very good team that has the potential to do very well. Also, I think Purple will probably come forth with them over-expecting many people's predictions. Locky, do you want to elaborate a bit on why you don't think the pink will be in the top three? Well, you see, everybody's like, Technoblade's the best, Technoblade's the best. And of course, this is omitting the three Australians in the competition. I agree, Technoblade probably would be the best in the competition. But is he good enough to carry his team to first place? How many times has he actually done that before? How many times has he gotten his team to first place as opposed to second or third or like ninth? It's once. But it's once. Cool. Listen to that. Once. Technoblade, the MVP, has got his first place team once. And I'm assuming that team is a lot stronger than the current team he's on. Was it not? Well, I would also say the competitors are weaker, aren't they? You have to remember that this is a very, very casual event compared to the super competitive uh, teams and events that we've had before. So, I, I mean, your argument that pink is weaker than other teams, like, yeah, all, all of the teams are generally weaker in this event. They're, that's on purpose. Anyone's game. It doesn't necessarily mean that pink has it in the bag. Wilbur Soot said it himself on Reddit that he is not a good player and people keep putting him too high in the tier lists. And I'm not saying he's bad and they're going to be the reason they lose, but he's bad and they're going to be the reason they lose. Love you, Wilbur. All right. Well, okay. Wil Wilbur had one bad season the last time. Maybe a couple if you include MCC 13. That doesn't mean he's a terrible player. He could still bounce right back to his past performances. And if he does, then, you know, he's, he's going to do really well. He's also very capable in dodgebolt. Um, he could definitely close out a couple rounds if he, if he really needs to. 
and I, I don't know your 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 lack of faith in pink just doesn't make sense to me i i have very much faith in pink that they're gonna take home the bronze all right well that concludes our team predictions for this mcc Thank you for watching the MCC pre-show. That these have been our takes on MCC. Let us know what you think in the comments if you agree or completely disagree with us, and we'll see you in the waiting room MCC waiting room before the MCC.